Moving on to our next featured poet, who is Paul McGrain. And uh, Paul is the man who runs Poetry at Three uh, at the uh, Poetry Cafe, which is the uh, first Thursday of every month. Paul instigated this back in 2012, I think, wasn't it? Something Ooh. like that. A long time ago. <laughs> a few years ago. My brain's um, not ready to do maths. Well, not, not to worry. <laughs> anyway, more importantly, he's a poet. And in 2016, he was highly commended in the York Mix Poetry Competition and long listed in the South Bank Poetry Competition. And now um, we're celebrating his debut poetry collection, Elastic Man, published by Indigo Dreams. I think that was part of a competition as well. Yeah. Um, so it's, a, it's out now and it's on sale here. It's eight pounds. You can uh, hear Paul reading the poems right here, right now. Paul McGray. <laughs> Just in case you don't like the poems, I'll just show you the lovely cover so you can judge, <laughs> judge the book by the cover. Look at that lovely cover. Um, so I'm skiving off work, so I thought um, out of guilt I should read poems that are loosely based on work, although some of them are more loose than others. Um, and uh, I thought as well, I'll, since I'm uh, not in work, I'll do lots of admin while I'm here, so I've got all these pages numbered, which is going to be a torture for the 20 minutes I'm, I'm reading. Um, hope If you see me going, oh my god, I've never read this before, it's because my admin has gone wrong. So um, this is loosely, as I say, based on um, work. I used to work for uh, BT on, Cam um, on Shaftesbury Avenue, Cambridge Circus. And uh, every so often I'd go to a bank. Remember, remember those? Um, and sometimes in that bank, Dennis Norden would be in there. And he died yesterday, uh, poor old fella. I think he got to the age of 98, I think? 96? Well, still. Um, he wasn't really trying if he was only 96. So, got so this is called Poem in Which I Meet Dennis Norden. I once met Dennis Norden in a bank. I say met. He was in the queue. I was at the bank, overdrawn, planning my excuses. Norden knows. Norden glasses. Almost certainly Norden. What he did and when, I can't recall. The bank is no longer the bank. Where I live now, no one knows of Norden. They might say, and they do, who was Dennis Norden? But for weeks, months, years, strangers would exclaim, Dennis Norden, you met Dennis Norden in a bank. <laughs> so, um, at the risk of losing my admin system altogether, I'm reverting to paper. <laughs> Um, there's a fellow at work who comes in every day wearing the same aftershave, so it's a relief to be out here today, so I'm not sort of sitting in the same room as him. This is called patchouli. <laughs> I'd rather be at work with the recently exhumed than the man with malodorous perfume. You have to stop breathing for a while when he walks in the room. Flies who breathe in a different way, are flip-flopped on their backs, waggle legs pointing up to heaven. If I knew how to burgle, I'd find out where he lives, flushing the aroma down the loo. Goodbye fish, currently alive, soon to be afloat on the surface of the sea. <laughs> Um, so, as you can probably tell, I'm not particularly macho, but um, sometimes I, uh, you know, have dreams of maybe being, who knows. This is called Bond to the Rescue. To Jennifer. I see him most when the office is slow. That time between good morning and see you tomorrow. He comes crashing through ceilings, sliding under doors. This, he says, is not what men like us were put here for. When he saw me last, I was waiting, still, on a should-be-here-by-now. 
I heard a call. And there he was, stood by the Aston Martin. Life, he said, is far too short for this. Get in. <laughs> he always drives me to his favourite casino to dance with girls with double agent hearts. Someone else's blood on our trigger tight tuxedos. And when we jump, splat, off the top of a multi-storey building, we survive like brothers in this action hero life. <laughs> So, um, as I said, we used to work on Shaftesbury Avenue on Friday nights. We would go down, or Friday, what became increasingly Friday afternoons, we'd go down to the Thames where there used to be, I don't know if it's still there, there used to be a river boat that we'd just drink beer and uh, wine and anything they would give us. And uh, sometimes uh, one thing led to another. This is called fire. Tied to the Thames, on board the Queen Mary, some of us were standing on the edge, shirt sleeves and blouses, everyone merry and way past that really awkward stage when all you have to talk about is work. I still take the mick even now. Look, look, that's you, wide-eyed at the river. The water, the water's on fire. We all laughed. It was night. The fire was caused by the lights from the buildings on the bank at Westminster. You look like you're witnessing a miracle, I said later, taking a last glug of wine and kissing you for the first time. Um, so back in the terrible old days of the 19th century, uh, if you were out of work or you were in debt, you could end up in a workhouse and of course they gave you just rubbishy tasks to do all day. But I think my job sometimes is a bit tedious. Uh, they were given terrible tasks, um, one of which was creating something called oakum, which was just old tarry rope that you'd have to pick all the tar out of and then all that rope would be sent to ships and they would plug the holes with, of the ships with it uh, to pack the sort of joints of the timbers. Workhouse. I earn a little money, but mainly I'm paid in blisters and a broken back. And there's nothing I can do about it. They needed a way to plug every hole in the wooden ships of the Royal Fleet without it costing an arm and a leg. And guess who they found to trick out that thread from old bits of rope as fat as a noose. To ask for more would be a big mistake and my rations could be cut for a week. What I choose to say is nothing at all. I'm allowed in the garden now and then where today the sky is coated in tar and rain slicks through a crack in the gutter. I suck in lung smoke as a medicine. A blackbird has been picking on a worm. His life must be repetition, like mine, from birdsong on the kitchen roof at dawn to roosting in the apple tree at dusk. But one thing he has I may never have, and I want to pull at every feather remove his possibility of flight. <laughs> uh, my dad was a minor, his dad was a minor. So far, I haven't been a minor, but you never know. It's called industrial heritage. When a fat slab of anthracite fell, the others got on with the dig and let him find his own way to local anaesthetic and a saw. His father, too, had been a miner, of limestone, then of coal, but was coughing blood long before his son was old enough to work. Only three of us at school had dads down the mine. Coal was home delivered on a truck and barrowed by dad to the shed. 
I learned that if you crack one sweetly, you might find a perfect leaf. Black snot on my sleeves for the rest of the day. There's a word for why my dad retired early, pneumoconiosis, minus lung. So I will finish this bit with a poem. So uh, I live in Walthamstow, um, as does Angelina. Borough culture. <laughs> Next year, borough culture. This year, not borough culture, but we are quite cultured. We've got the William Morris Gallery. And uh, on the first floor, uh, my favourite work of art in there is a socialist banner which is uh, behind glass and it's, it's a, a workers' banner they would have taken on marches, although this one is bright red, so I'm assuming it never saw the light of day. But it's an absolute gorgeous thing. And um, on it, there's a, a, a poem, or extract from a poem, that says, when Adam delved and Eve span, who was then the gentleman? And I suppose the idea behind it was, of this banner is, um, well, I'll tell you in a bit, but uh, whereas work today we think of as a trudge, what ideally work should be is something we enjoy and should be um, something we would enjoy better if we were all equal. Socialist Banner, 1890s, William Morris Gallery. On the stretch silk, a painted Bible scene. Working together are Adam and Eve. She's spinning wool as he tills the garden. Beneath them, lines of poetry are sewn, in simple rhyme so the meaning is clear. From equality comes joy of labour. On the red background, in letters of gold, socialism, fellowship, brotherhood. And at the bottom, a symbolic sun, a golden future for the working man and woman. The makers of this work of art are gone. The message on the banner carries on. The current ills are coming to an end, what we had before we will have again. Paul McGrain there, pausing on a note of hope, which is lovely. Um,